Beta Branch version 1.7.2 just dropped for Bannerlord, and it's time to talk about some patch notes. What are some things that happened here today? And I'm going to go through them right now with you. So for 1.7.2, some of the big stuff that's happened is mainly performance overhauls. You're going to notice that the game is going to run a lot smoother, a lot better, and it's been doing that for every patch up since early access launch. But I'd say this one does even more so to make the game feel a lot smoother on a lot of different systems, not just my own, which is a super good system. Um, in addition to that, we get a lot of quality of life changes and fixes across a lot of the menus, across a lot of the ways that you can access those menus, organize them as far as say, say like the encyclopedia or even the uh, prisoner recruitment. You can just do, hey, just take all these guys up into my party, whatever it is. Um, also, there are some additional changes too. And probably the biggest portion of these patch notes is a massive overhaul to the balancing for all of the troops. And I'm not gonna go through all of that in this video. I wanna mainly come through the, uh, the overall patch notes as we dive through them. And I'll be showing off anything relevant um, in game, such as the new armors and the new capes that were added in um, and some other things here and there. But that's really honestly the, the down and dirty breakdown of the 1.7.2 beta branch. It is mainly quality of life and performance based. Um, it's not a small patch. There are quite a few of these things that are, were uh, done to the game. So a nice overpass has been done or overhaul has been done. Um, but you're not going to be looking for any new content or anything like that is not going to be coming in the form of this patch. I, I'd say maybe the newest thing that you can do is now talk to any kind of noble you have as prisoner and try to convert them to either your vassal or your faction as a vassal or your faction as a kingdom owner. So you have that option now for any noble that you've got prisoner. That is the down and dirty breakdown here of 1.7.2. If that's all you wanted to know, you just want to dive on in, uh, go ahead and shut the video down. I will tell you that this is going to be 100% compatible with all of your saves and nothing's really done uh, or been done to the game to really warrant starting a brand new campaign. You'd be fine with just an existing one. Um, I will say though that if anytime you're trying to find a wanderer, a companion, they have made that system a lot easier. You can ask the tavern keepers, hey, you know, I'm looking for a, a companion. They'll give you some, some uh, context clues on where to find them. And also they've done a better job of the, uh, I guess the the AI behind it, not necessarily like the actual companions AI, but basically the logic behind whether or not or where they spawn and what have you. So that has been overhauled, which is quite nice. But for those that want to get it down into the entire patch notes, the nitty gritty here, let's keep going here on 1.7.2. But before you head out, if you are leaving, don't forget to comment, like, and or subscribe. I cannot tell you how much those little things do help me out in a big way. Let's move on into the bigger patch notes. Scrolling on down, again, there are a ton of single player crash fixes. As I always say, if you are encountering a number of fixes, please go through that list and see if they are now been fixed for you. I'm not aware of any big ones that were occurring, so they hopefully have been fixed if you are encountering any. Now for performance, we get a lot of optimization here, right? Like this is all line, almost all these lines say optimize, but optimize range siege weapon usage by AI. So they're working a lot better with it. Optimize core campaign logic and mechanics to improve general campaign performance and reduce AI decision spikes. So anytime you kind of have the game like hang for a second, then a bunch of stuff happens all at once. That would be some sort of, that would be an example of a spike. Um, if that's an AI decision spike or not, I'm not necessarily 100% sure, but that is what that is. Optimize the overall memory usage of the game. Um, so I just built this computer and I have not changed the graphics of the game based off of what I, I booted up and looked at what my setting, settings are and I set them all to max or at least what it, what it thinks I can handle the, the best. In the past, I have not been able to have that present with Bannerlord because I also record it and it takes up a lot of system resources. That is not the case now. <laughs> the game was just buzzing at like max setting for the most part. So that has been changed and it is quite nice and I love it. Optimize the reinforcements spawn system. Reinforcements now spawn one by one. So what this means is when you're fighting a battle, the reinforcements will come in in a chunk, but not all at once. So let's say you've got a battle limitation of 400 on 400 and you're fighting an army that is 800 on 800. Well, the reinforcements will happen rather than them just 
50 of them spawning in at once, they'll spawn 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like rapid succession. So that they will trickle in in very in a quick pace, but it won't cause for this huge burst of 50 units to enter the game. So you, as the player, won't overextend and run into that spawn point and get killed. And it helps you for uh, system resources and, and whatnot, to not just have these huge drops of uh, units in and out. For art, we get five new cape pieces. Various leather harnesses is basically what this is. So decorated leather harness with uh, padding, with scales, with uh, mail. And then we get a brand new actual like leather harness with a cape on it, which is really cool. And I'll show that off, the cape leather harness as it were. I'll show that off in the in-game section of this video. Added four new body armor pieces, the Mastercrafted Southern Scale Mail. It's basically different variations of that. So you've got Scale Mail over Chain Halberk, Scale Mail over Chain Mail, and then you have a Tartan Toga. Those are your four new body pieces here. Adjusted the human body for what I do not know, but into the UI, we get added a sorting system to the quest screen. Quests can now be sorted by date, last, updated, and time due. The latest sort by selection is tracked and applied when reopening the screen, which is nice. This is also done for the inventory screen as well. Added an equipment set selector for encyclopedia troops. Gained traits are now shown during character creation, which is really nice. Added a skip all rounds button to the tournament screen, which is really, really a nice quality of life update. If you're playing through a ton of tournaments in the early game, or you wanna have some fun in the mid or late game, you don't have to press skip, 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 skip to get to your turn, you can just press skip all rounds. Added a recruit all button to the recruit prisoners pop up to the party screen. Improved the layout of the settlement overlay, quest screens, crosshair, town management, scoreboard, Party screen and party nameplates. We'll show that off in a bit. Added new UI, new UI elements to the encyclopedia troop trees to show off perk requirements between troop upgrades so you at least kind of know what's going on from, from uh, troop to troop. Moving in, there's some other things here that are pretty nice too, like workshop limit is now displayed in the clan tier tooltip. That's just a nice quality of life thing, but for the most part, these are the, the big standout ones. Uh, but for battles and sieges, sieges, added an option under the gameplay tab that allows you to determine the order in which troops should spawn. So by default, if you were not touch this at all, troops spawn according to their position in the roster. So if you have things organized from tier one to tier five, and you have them organized by group, that is how they're going to spawn into the game. High level, high level troops will spawn first, low level, low level will spawn first, homogenous, high and low level troops will spawn in equal ratios. Depending on your situation, I would say I would do either homogenous, just to kind of have a nice spread, or if I'm fighting a very hard keep, I would go high level. If I'm trying to level up units, I would go low level. So you nice, you not, it's nice that you have this kind of ability to cater that in every engagement you get into. So be, we'll, we'll show that off in the gameplay tab, but keep in mind you can now do that here. Fix a handful of bugs too with battles and sieges, uh, stuff like cause the player to move and break out of formation during the order of battle phase. That was quite common. Fixed a bug that caused the enemy AI to fight less effectively in certain cavalry situations by not charging. Uh, that you would notice that they would just kind of simply stop, trot down, and then pull out their sword. They wouldn't get like the full bonus of all their mass and all their speed they built up. Fixed a bug that caused the order of battle screen to open when the player had less than 20 troops and was engaging two parties at once. So a lot of these things have been changed and fixed. For the character development system, uh, Siege Engine Kills now award engineering experience instead of athletics and throwing, which is very nice. One of the very few ways you can get engineering experience. And total skill gained from trade profit will now be logged once instead of once per transaction. You'll get a little bit more. It'll look like you're getting more, but it's actually just kind of putting it all into one little uh, group there. Also, we get some fixes to the cultural bugs, which are uh, cultural traits here. Fixed a bug that caused the Kazay cultural bonus. Recruiting and upgrading mounted troops is 10% cheaper, not to apply to horse archers. Fixed a bug that caused the Asarai cultural bonus 10% less trade penalty to only apply to trade goods. And then lastly, fixed a bug that caused the Batanian culture bonus 10% lower build rate or town products and settlements to not be calculated correctly when the town and uh, had low loyalty. So those have now been fixed. For clan and party, improvements and fixes to the campaign AI, increase the weight of party priorities. So parties that have defensive priority will try to defend settlements from raids, sieges, and protect their territories. They will not 
join besieger raider armies and parties that have aggressive uh, priority will try to raid and see settlements more often they will not join defender patrolling parties so it, it actually kind of makes your ai party i think a little bit more resilient because they won't just get sucked into these armies that just get killed and you're like all right great it's they're dead again i broke them out of prison okay now they're dead again because they're just joining all these armies and getting ripped apart so it's nice to see that you can actually have some some control over that too also Parties are now more likely to raid and siege settlements that are near their territory. This was achieved by tweaking the distance score weight of the target settlement when deciding where to siege next, and improved the campaign map AI to prevent party zigzag behavior, being stuck between two objectives. What they would do is, they would say, hey, you know, there's a town there, there's a, uh, what's it called? Uh, castle there, and they would just kind of go bing, 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 back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So they've, they've done stuff to fix that. And also with this one here too, parties that are trying to defend their settlements against besiegers will have a short-term escort behavior to a nearby stronger ally party that has the same defensive behavior. This will make them engage the besiegers together instead of being stuck in a zigzag behavior. This again would be an example of a bunch of parties that just kind of move towards an army then back towards back towards back because they can't decide whether or not all those units are going to join them in the fight until it's like the absolute utmost point of no return where they're just all going to commit this makes it so that the ai will tack onto the stronger ally and do what they're doing basically so a nice big change there um, implemented a new companion spawn behavior that will try to equalize the available companions in the game. This fixes a bug that caused companions to be hard to find during late game. In game time has to pass to equalize companions in older saves. So if you uh, do want this to happen um, and, you're, and you're using an older save, just simply turn the game on and walk away. Uh, hopefully you don't have a kingdom and your kingdom's not going to go into ruins, but they're basically saying in game time has to pass in order this to equalize. If you're a vassal, if you're a mercenary, Make a save, turn the game on, go eat something, go take a shower, whatever it is, and it should hopefully kind of refresh, quote unquote, your companion spawn. Improved AI food management. Now, this is, you would think that this is kind of minor, but it's actually quite huge. Uh, AI armies will starve themselves out on the campaign map before they actually ever do anything. So the AI food management has been improved here. Armies will now take villages into account when thinking of buying food if they are starving. Parties will give more priority to their food stocks if they have wounded troops. And parties will now, on average, starve less amount of the time, which is very, very huge. For economy and trade, elite caravans are now created from culture-based troop templates. Previously, out of random good, uh, this was previously out of random good troops. The elite troop template that is used when creating an elite caravan corresponds to the players, the players' starting culture, not the location in which you're creating that caravan. Depending on the notable power, the AI can now also create elite caravans, which likewise use elite party templates that correspond to their culture. So, elite caravans now have a little bit more. I don't want to say staying power, but they, they kind of, they tack onto your starting culture and you'll at least know that you're, okay, I'm getting elite uh, Sturgeon or elite Kazate or elite uh, Assyrian troops. So you kind of know what's coming on with that. Uh, updated the crafting material cost of some pieces, which is always just kind of nice to see with crafting. And it is now possible to ask tavern keepers about available companion candidates. So kind of like you can do with the... Um, Oh, what's it called? With the arena master, they'll tell you, hey, here's where the arenas are. They'll give you a little bit more information on companions so that you can kind of fine tooth where they are, fine tune where they are and go and hunt them. Not hunt them down, but maybe go recruit them. You don't want to hunt down a companion. <laughs> that sounds bad, unless you're a man killer. Going into conversations and encounters, prisoner interaction, you can now interact with prisoners. You can try to coax prisoners into defecting, and it is now possible to ask them or ask to talk to prisoners of other parties. So I do love this a lot. It really allows us to get some actual interaction with prisoners rather than them just essentially being like a ransom pony, right? Like they're around, I'm going to give, I'm going to put them in my keep and get ransom for it, whatever it is. I do like that quite a bit. For other, we've got um, updated game concepts, encyclopedia entries, added a field of view adjustment parameter to photo mode, which is cool. Updated the equipment flag system for all characters in order to prevent equipment malfunctions of NPC characters and change the banner colors of various banner groups in order to prevent confusion with major faction banners. But take a look at this little guy. Equipment and troop changes. So I'm going to just tab on over to that, and this is a post in the forums, and it goes over everything. So I will either do a video exclusively on this, if you guys want, just go ahead and let me know in the comment section below, or I'll just do my updated ones of each individual location. But 
this is a really, really big change and overhaul to a lot of uh, units here. So like, let's take, for example, we'll just look at one. Let's look at the, I wanted to, let's look at the Varyag. Added nasal helm over leather, which was 23 head, removed heavy cavalry helmet, which is 46 head. The Varyag, I think, was a tier two or tier three version. Might even have been tier three or before. But either way, so they've made certain units weaker, some units stronger, depending on where they are in the tier and what their armament is. A lot of this is geared towards armor and less so towards actual weapons. But you can still see that some cases, like the Sturgeon heavy spearmen, they added long sword. Uh, long war sword, heavy round shield, heavy lamellar over uh, hauberk, which is 50, 25, 15. The plate reinforced gauntlets, which is 18 arms, and warlord helmet over mail, which is 48 head, which is different than the fuller narrow uh, war sword, which is, I believe, not as good. The reinforced large round shield, which is, again, I believe, not as good. And the decorated hauberk, which is less armor overall than the heavy lamellar of course and the fur rimmed gloves which are lower armor and plated warlord helmet which is higher or which is lower armor or higher armor than its its new replacement so they've tweaked a lot of this stuff around you're going to notice that some characters some units are going to be playing a lot differently now hopefully either with either added stability or some sort of nerf built into them again we will go through this a, a lot of kazate stuff was not substantial if you thought kazate we maybe got a huge nerf uh stuff like Added step war bow, removed step uh, recurve bow because it got stuck in the dryer for too long, step row. Uh, but stuff like Empire, it's an example, got a lot of changes too. So take a look at this. And if you do want me to, I will go through all of it in its own video. But I do want to bring up this stuff. Bolts now all got piercing damage added to them. So light, normal, and heavy got two, four, and five respectively. Also, uh, well, I don't need to go over that. But we'll go over it anyway. Fur trim short tunic can now provide six body armor, was two. So something to get some buffs here. Legionary scale now provides 18 leg armor, was 15. And eight, ar eight, armor, uh, eight arm armor was six. So you can see that a lot of this stuff was changed and moved around. Um, all this, this too, right? Uh, renamed Asari decorated chainmail to Southern decorated chainmail. Um, a little bit easier to find because this is the old naming uh not nomenclature the old naming mechanic and they went into like the specific cultural naming mechanic and now they've kind of put it back to like highland and azurai is to southern stuff like that so that is nice to see but moving into this with multiplayer we got new game modes adding a ranking system for bronze with three tiers within it sergeant captain general then conqueror as well as added to this this is going to be for matchmaking so now matchmaking is a ranked process um, i would still love to see a lot more support for multiplayer and i imagine we'll probably get that in the post launch because we do probably have end of early access coming around the next two three months more than likely they did say they wanted to do it in the beginning of 2022 we'll see how that all kind of pans out a lot of different changes here for the um for the multiplayer but for both we get optimize the castle gate script and reduce ram usage in flora heavy scenes this was a really big really big resource hog in the past if you were to say jump into anywhere in batania or vlandia you might be dealing with a lot of foliage that has now been curtailed back with those performance increases now that we've gone over all these patch notes we'll show off a little bit in the game there's not a whole ton to show off i really want to show off some of the new I guess kind of overhaul the uh, menus and go through uh, all the new items that were added in for both the body and the new quote unquote cape items that were brought in. Uh, where are they? Right, right here. So let's go switch on over to the game and show off some of those uh, changes. So to start us off in the game, we're going to get completely naked. So let's take a look at some of the new armor that we can now have. Um, first one here is the Tartan Toga. Nothing crazy, but it is pretty cool nonetheless. I apologize if any of the graphics right now look a little funky. I'm, I just re-downloaded Reshade after the new build, so I'm dealing with stuff like a lot of bloom right here and stuff like that. So I apologize if that's annoying. But we have our Master Crafted Southern Scale Armor, which looks great. Like, it looks honestly amazing. Then we have the Chainmail variation over that. There's some chain over here and here. Then we have the Scale over it. That goes really well with the new um, ornate desert battle crown that came out. But here are the, uh, it's all tier six. It's obviously going to be quite expensive to get access to it. But I just wanted to show that off. Now let's go ahead and switch on over to a little bit more of a, um, an imperial look here. Uh, do I have an imperial helmet right over here? I don't think I do. Here, we'll do that. That's cool. 
And here are the new leather harnesses. So we have this one right here, which gives a nice little padded quaff. This one right here that gives us some mail to kind of match the legionary mail. Then some scale armor, because we did get some new scale armors that were added to the game. Then lastly, this new caped leather harness, which looks great. A nice good purple there, looking pretty snazzy. So these are your new uh, chest and shoulder slash cape armors that were added to the game. Moving into the tavern, we have the ability to now talk to the tavern keeper, like I said. So I'm looking for some people to hire with specific skills. Would you happen to know anyone looking for work in the towns of Kazate? And now I can have a nice, good... Uh, break out of how to find these people quicker, right? I would travel much faster if I had a good scout by my side, a good side, good engineer, a good surgeon. So let's just click surgeon. And then I haven't heard of seen someone with such skill for a long while. So you at least know what's available in the lands of the Kazate. So this will be specific to the uh, towns and cultures of the Kazate. So let's say I go back here, maybe I go a scout. Hey, you know, I haven't heard of anyone back here, a good engineer, haven't heard of anyone. Uh, I'm going feel safer with a good, oh, we did that one, uh, good quartermaster. Still haven't heard of anyone. And planning to sponsor my caravans with good trade, basically. Oh, okay, so here we go. Matinius the Falcon, he left for Odengard. Perhaps you can find him there or on the road. Is there someone else other than Matinius? So basically, you, you can cycle through the available companions that fit the specific niche you want them to fill. And I love this. I think this is a really huge addition because it does make any new campaign you want to start in finding specific companions far, far easier. Moving over to the encyclopedia, we get the ability to now take a look at all the available sets of items that each and every uh, NPC unit can use. Let's say, uh, look at the hardened brigands. We can switch this. We can see the different armament that they have on. Same, oh, Spearman only just has one set. You just take a look here at the bottom. It says three sets. So we'll cycle through these. So different bracers is what it looks like. Heroic line breaker. Again, different bracers. Heavy axeman, just one set. The heavy spearmen here seem to switch, swap off their helmet and their shoulder piece. So, and again, dude, this is showing off kind of a little bit of the difference of equipment here. Now, in 1.7.2, we see that the Sturgian warrior has a much different looking attire. Uh, Soldier two has a little bit different of one spearman, different helmet, of course. Um, and again, we've seen this as well with the heavy axemen and with the spearmen. So, a bunch of different variations to have here, and, and I really do like. This ability to cycle through this it was previously done with a mod so now it's just now in the game it's kind of cool to see what you have available for every unit set and lastly here to close us out some of the new ui improvements here so i go over to quests we can sort this by date last updated time due stuff like that i go into the party screen the party screen itself has its nameplates kind of changed these resolutions on them are fixed down a little bit smaller icon overall i've noticed that the party screen didn't get a change so much as just like an overhaul in its UI scale and whatnot. This was added a little bit ago, but if you take a look at troops here at the top and prisoners at the bottom, prisoners is now sticky. Even though I have much more troops, I can kind of, at any point I can go, well, you know what, I just want to go to, I just want to go to prisoners here. So, okay, there we go. That becomes, that's now a sticky little portion of the game. And also, we're going to go into, this screen here has been changed around a little bit, better tavern looking screen there. Uh, keep we've gotten these art this artwork added in not too long ago but same thing here overall things pretty much are the same but when i click manage town this too has been cleaned up a little bit this icon's different these appear a little bit different uh this ui overall has just kind of gotten a little bit of a cleanup not overall like a, like a total change but again just a little bit of a cleanup things look a little bit nicer more succinct uh like when i take a look at um, the fortifications, it's just kind of easier to read everything. I mean, so it just makes a little bit more sense. But that kind of covers it here for 1.7.2. If you guys have any questions, any concerns, anything like that, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I do have some fun uh, Bannerlord streams planned here now that Total War Warhammer 3 is concluded. So if you want to see anything specific, maybe a mod or a specific style of challenge, whatever it is, go ahead and let me know again in the comment section below. But as always, my bros, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.